think we'd better try another hairdo. Oh, it wouldn't help. It wouldn't hurt. Ginger, why don't you try some lipstick, huh? Oh, that's a good idea. No, honey, don't eat it. Is she eating it? Yeah, she's eating it. Oh, well, try some eyeshadow then. No, if she eats that, you look awful with a black tongue. Oh, Ginger, there must be something we could do. Well, girls, how are you doing? Professor, look. Come what? here. Look. Here, quick, look. What? Look, the, the reed. Well, what about it? It's moving. It's moving again. Ginger, I don't care if they did do that in a movie once. Gilligan is not breathing through that reed. <laughs> Professor. All right. Gilligan! Oh! Let's say that Ginger's the most beautiful, uh, Mrs. Howell certainly is the most gracious, and last but not least, Mary Ann is the sweetest. Yeah. yeah, let's say that. Let's not say it. I said that Mrs. Howell's the most beautiful creature in the world, and that is precisely what I meant. I beg your pardon, when I said that Mary Ann was the most beautiful in the world, that is exactly what I meant. Oh. <laughs> Did you right where we left off? <laughs> I surrender to our passions, my love. You leave it to me. By the time science and I are through, you'll make Ginger and Mrs. Howell look like dropouts from Boys Town. Well, what's the fishing call for? One has to provide you with a form of isometric exercise. Isometric exercise? Yes. Always remember that true beauty is the end result of the inner glow of good health. And isometric exercise provides for the interplay of muscle against muscle to improve the general physique. Well, but Professor, I just want to beat Mrs. Howell and Ginger, not Cassius Clay. <laughs> when? You've got a point there. Gilligan is kind of tender-hearted. He might vote for the underdog. <laughs> that is, I mean, girl. <laughs> That's right, so uh, we're going to have to do something to convince him. What was that? Something wrong, Marianne? Oh, I don't know my shoes. What is it, Marianne? Wait. Well, no, I can't. Mr. Thurston Howell III. Senor Howell, please be seated. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, George here tells me that you are well acquainted with money. Well, shall we say that money and I are on a first name basis? <laughs> Good. Our economy needs a strong economy. Uh, that is why I appoint you as secretary of my treasury. What treasury? That is your first assignment. Well, you see, to have a monetary system, a country must first possess uh, certain rare, precious metals. In my country, all you need is printing press on paper. Well, I'm afraid we don't have either of those. Ah, but we do have tree bark on my signature. <laughs> tree bark on your signature? Preposterous. Suddenly, it's very preposterous. <laughs> but don't overdo it. We want to stay underdeveloped enough so we can get an American loan. <laughs> Next! <laughs> Mrs. Thurston Howell III. Your Excellency. <laughs> oh, thank you. A. Whatever do you mean, and the plan A? You don't fall, Rodriguez. I have been through Plan A too many times. Oh, forget about Plan B! You mean you know about Plan B? Now, what it is, is the fact that he's probably got one of his famous collections in there, one of those banana skin collections, or maybe it's a clamshell identification bracelet. There's nothing in there but a bunch of feathers. <laughs> feathers? What feathers? It's a secret. What's a secret? The feathers I'm collecting from Mrs. Howell's secret pillow. Gilligan, will you get back and listen to that radio? We are trying to do something important here. Exactly. We couldn't care less whether you had a feather off the goose that laid the golden egg. What goose? The goose that laid the golden egg, you know, in the fairy tale. Laid a golden egg? Yes, Gilligan. Uh, once upon a time, there was a goose. This goose laid a golden egg. Now, this goose was very important in the town. 
Don't never mind you. Please, please get back to that radio. Exactly. You guys won't take any of the feathers when I'm not looking, will you? We have more important things to do. Will you get over to that radio? Yes, sir. I wonder where that feather rolled. Where that feather rolled. Where the lens rolled. Professor, one of these days, right there. There may be some scout. to do and nobody to do it with. Hmm? You were uh, saying something, old boy? Mr. Howell, now that I'm a member of the club, what can I do? I had more fun as a club steward. Well, you haven't got the knack of being idly rich. You see, you should do like me, just snooze and dream, dream and snooze. The pleasures are unlimited. That's me, Mr. Howell. When I go to sleep, I have nightmares and about big crawly things and creatures and big hairy monsters that grab you down the throat. <laughs> Ooh, vulgar. Your dreams are too ordinary. You should uh, upgrade them. Upgrade them? Well, yes, you, you take my dreams, like the one that you... Marvelous. I was foreclosing the mortgage on a lifelong friend, and I was creating a, a poverty pocket right in the heart of Beverly Hills. <laughs> I don't want to dream about making more money. I want to spend it. You God, you have nothing but nightmares. <laughs> now, there's only one use for money, and that's to make more money. But, Mr. Howell, I want to spend it to make people happy. Well, that's a very noble sentiment, very warm and generous, but stupid. <laughs> now, let me finish that dream on a pleasant note. A wholesale arrest of the Supreme Court. Ah! <laughs> yes, we we cleaned up the island. Thank you, Ginger. But believe me, the last thing this island needs right now is a rock garden. But you will get me some more, won't you, Professor? Well, just how many more do you think you're going to need? Oh, I don't know, about 20 or 30 or 40. Hibiscus bush and uh, professor. I mean, anytime you're ready, rock baby. Rock baby? A showbiz talk. Oh. Understand, pussycat? Oh. <laughs> quiet, quiet up there, you bird. Light, action, camera, action. Oh, there you are. She's oh, out. Can't you just stand up? You'll do it every day of your life. But Mr. Howell, the chair... Well, you're not playing a scene with the chair. You're playing a scene with Ginger. Do you understand? Yes, yes. <laughs> I know you do. All right, back in the bushes, my dear, and uh, remember the signal. Okay? And then back to... From the top... <laughs> the house, when I asked you to, we wouldn't have to be running all over the island looking for him. Are you still mad at me? 
You want the truth? No. Well, I guess they're not at home. Well, I guess they had to sell their hut. <laughs> to whom? Well, let's see, there's, um... Oh, Gilligan, come on! Ah! Here, Mr. Howell. Right, right, Let me right. do that. You're going to fall in, I think. <laughs> Put it right under the water. Oh, yeah. Yes, I see. Yes. There we are, Mr. Howell. Nice and full. I'll get this knot untied. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Howell. <laughs> Decent way to go, there was. Ah, the dreaded wasubi berry. One succulent drop, your body's covered with hair, your teeth turn into fangs, your hands into claws. My mother in law must have had a batch of those. <laughs> tomorrow and tomorrow, we're on.